to the Grow with Google annual holiday live stream. I'm James, and I'll be your host for today. We're coming to you live from Google HQ in Mountain View, California. We have a very special live stream today as we've teamed up with our friends over at Constant Contact to present today's workshop, Spruce Up Your Holiday Marketing Plan. There are over 322 Grow with Google partners hosting viewing parties around the country right now, which is an all-time live stream record. There are also lots of folks tuning in from home, and I wish I had the time to say hello to every single one of you. But here are a few shout outs. Kristen Byers and the team at Gannon University SBDC in Erie, Pennsylvania. Hi, Kristen. Tammy Galloway at Navarro Community College in Midlothian, Texas. Happy holidays, Navarro Community College team. And Mary Raphael George at Stanford Public Schools in Stanford, Connecticut. Thank you so much for hosting, Mary. And to all of our partners, thank you for helping support businesses in local communities across the country. For those of you attending today's session, I hope this workshop helps you to create an action plan to reach more customers just in time for the holiday shopping rush. Stasia Kudrez, lead educator for Growth Google, will help kick things off for us. But first, we have a quick video for you. It's done. My laptop is handed in, my phone is handed in. I'm an entrepreneur. I could do this. <laughs> uh, welcome to Sweet Soul Kitchen. Um, I have about 124 orders to do. It's extremely stressful, frustrating. <laughs> It can be done. I'm playing a proof. It can be done. I need to do it with people that I love. We had a lot of friends and family come out and help us out. And every day is very day. It takes real guts to run businesses for the generations. Thank you, James, and thanks to everyone out there for joining us for today. Thank you, James, and thanks to everyone out there for joining us for today's live stream. I'm Stasia. Okay, so raise your hands. How many of you out there have already started your holiday shopping? I'm not sure if it's because I've had holiday marketing in my mind, but I'm going to fess up. I already have a pile of gifts that are growing in my closet. In fact, it grew a little bit more last night after dinner. And that's partly because I've had the opportunity to be visiting a lot of libraries across the United States this year, teaching people about Google's products and services. My bookworm friends can expect lots of cool literary themed gifts. Okay, I'm digressing here. Now, I couldn't see you if you were raising your hands out there because I'm in a studio, but I'm gonna assume that some of you have. Now, if you're like me, and not all of you are, but you might be thinking to yourselves, wouldn't it be great if all of my shopping was done by Thanksgiving so I could spend more time relaxing this holiday season? So every single year, finishing my shopping early, it seems like it's gonna be a possibility. I even have a spreadsheet where I track all my gift ideas and my purchases, but methodical as I am, 
I'm always chasing down just a few last gifts at the last minute, and I am not alone. In fact, 70% of shoppers say that they still had shopping to do on the last week before the Christmas holiday. And more than half of last minute shoppers, they, they aren't certain where they want to buy it from, or they have multiple retailers in mind when they start that shopping. So this is a critically important time for many businesses. If your business could help me tie a bow on my shopping to-do list, you'd have a great chance of finding a customer. But in order to buy from you, I have to be able to find you. According to a study conducted in February, 83% of U.S. shoppers who visited a store in the last week say that they used online search before going into a store. The bottom line, is that even if you do most or all of your shopping offline, the process begins online. Okay, what's today? It's October 16th. I think that's right. If you start right now, you'll have time to get your online marketing ducks in a row. It's not too late, but the timing is critical. There was an interesting study conducted in 2018 that looked at the timing of U.S. shopping behavior. And based on the findings, we can group shoppers into four categories. The, based on the findings, the first one is evergreen, and then we have our early birds, our deal seekers, and our last minute. So what does this mean? Evergreen shoppers, they spread out their shopping over the entire holiday season, and they make up the majority of shoppers. It's 38%. These people are more likely to be Gen Xers and baby boomers. Early birds are the people who shop pre-holiday through Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And those people make up about 25% of, of shoppers. And again, they are primarily the baby boomers. Now, deal seekers do most of their shopping between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. This group is another 18% of shoppers and they are less likely to be baby boomers. This group is primarily millennials and Gen Xers. And here's another interesting bit of info to layer in on top of that. Of these people, 66% are actually shopping for themselves. So how's this for a call to action? Treat yourself. Last but not least, the last minute shoppers, they make up 19%. These shoppers wait until the last few days to do the majority of their holiday shopping. Like deal seekers, they're less likely to be baby boomers, more typically millennials and Gen Xers. Across all shopper categories, however, people spend slightly more than half their time shopping online and about half their time shopping in store. One exception to that was for the deal seekers. They tend to skew towards online shopping. The study found that 63% shop online and 37% per shop, shop in store. What are the takeaways for you? The majority of shoppers are browsing and purchasing over longer stretches of time. So that means it's more important than ever to start promoting your products and services earlier in the season. You may not want to wait until Black Friday to launch that big promotion that you've been planning. There were a few other interesting tidbits to point out. Not much of a surprise, but mobile continues to be an increasingly critical piece. Shoppers are using smartphones to browse and to buy, often when they're actually inside a store. And here's another tip that I thought was interesting and might help you market your products and services is that parents are typically falling into the deal seeker last minute buckets of shoppers. And as a parent myself, that does seem about right. Okay, now that we've discussed the shopping landscape, let's dive into things that you can do right now to appear online when shoppers are looking for products and services. I'll start by introducing a tool called Google My Business. Uh, actually, let's start with Google for Small Business. Next, I'll give you five hints to freshen up your business profile with Google My Business. And then third, I'll show you how Google Ads can help your business stand out in Google search results and on partner websites. After that, I'll turn it over to Dave from Constant Contact, and he's gonna talk about email marketing strategy. At the end, we'll leave some time for questions and answers. You can submit your questions via Twitter using the hashtag HolidayLivestream19. If you're attending a viewing party, you can ask your event host to give you a hand. So let's dive in, starting with Google for Small Business. 
Search drives holiday shopping, and Google plays a big part in that. Even offline purchases are initiated by online research. 83% of last-minute shoppers used online search to help them make a purchase. But what were they actually searching for? There are so many possibilities, including gift ideas and product availability, driving directions to a store, store hours on Black Friday, information about shipping costs. Maybe it's an unboxing video that helps people assemble a complicated toy. I could keep going. You may have heard the phrase, the age of assistance. It means that people expect their technology to help them to make their lives easier. This includes search. People are more curious, they're more demanding and more impatient than ever. Google's job is to assist these people, connecting them with the information that they want to find. If you can help provide those answers, maybe it's on your website, on YouTube, in a business profile, or in an ad, you have an opportunity to show up with shoppers who are looking for you. And search initiates a lot of shopping activity. Every month, Google helps drive 100 billion visits to business websites, which foster more than 3 billion connections between businesses and their customers. This opportunity to be found online gives even very small businesses a way to reach a world of customers. Incidentally, if you want to learn more about how Google search works, driving these connections, there's a detailed explanation in our March 2019 live stream, which was titled, Give Your Website a Refresh. You can rewatch it and all of our previous live streams by visiting g.co slash grow slash live streams. If you're just getting started marketing your business online, you may not be even sure where to begin. One resource that I'd like to introduce is called Google for Small Business. You can get to it by visiting google.com slash small business. Visit the site and you enter a few details about your business and what your goals are. And it's gonna generate a suggested plan that will help you meet your objectives using Google's tools. If you haven't had a chance to try it before today's live stream, check it out after the session to see if there are any opportunities that you can jump on just in time for the holiday shopping season. I'm going to talk about two of the products that you will likely see in your plan. Google My Business and Google Ads. Let's start with Google My Business. Creating a free business profile can help you connect with shoppers from every category, from evergreen to last minute. To reiterate, 83% of US shoppers visited a store in the last week say that they used, an, uh, they used online search before they went into the store. And that stat is similar for holiday shoppers. In fact, 78% who visited a store use that search before going in. But even if you don't sell products on your website, creating and nurturing an online presence can have a significant positive impact on your business. One way that you can help your business stand out on Google search and maps is by creating that free business profile using a tool called Google My Business. Google My Business is an option for businesses that make in-person contact with customers, either at a physical store or in a specified service area. Start by searching for your business on Google and then look on the right side of the search results page and see if an information box appears. That's called a knowledge panel. If your business shows up in that box, you're on your way. Now, if you created this business profile and you can access it, you can immediately implement some of the suggestions that I'll be offering today. If you see a business profile but you didn't create it, Look for a link that's labeled own this business with a little question mark and then follow the steps to claim it so then you can access and update the information. Now, if you do a search and you do not see a business profile, you can create one by visiting google.com slash business. If you're attending a live stream viewing party today and you need some help with this, you can ask your hosting partner to give you a hand. Now, once you create 
or claim your business profile, you can manage the information that appears on Google Search and Maps. Another bonus, you don't have to worry about different browsers and devices. Google My Business works on all the things, desktops, laptops, tablets, and mobile phones. Here's an example in the screenshot of a business profile as it appears on a mobile device. You can see details like the business name, the address, and the phone number, a description or overview, photos, videos, customer reviews, and more. If you've been using Google My Business for a while, there are some newer features that might interest you. You now have the ability to control your branding by customizing your cover photo, as well as adding a logo. And it's now easier than ever to share your business information. You can create a free short name, which is a short descriptive link that helps people access your profile. I won't go into a deep dive into Google My Business today, but I thought it would be good to show you where these edits are made. If you sign into Google My Business from a desktop or a laptop computer, you can access the dashboard. It's like the screenshot that you see on the right. The left navigation has links to relevant sections like info, photos, and posts. If you have a smartphone, you can download the free Google My Business app for Android and iOS. One advantage of the app is that you can use your smartphone's built-in camera to add photos and videos directly to your business profile. Okay, let's assume that you set this up and you can access Google My Business and you completed the verification process, which means you can then update the information via your computer or your smartphone. So what should you do next? I'm gonna give you five updates that you could knock out in five minutes a piece. Number one, I hesitate to say that any details about your business are more or less important, but your hours of operation are really, really important. People are looking for store hours. On Google, mobile searches that include the words store hours historically grow throughout December. The peak is actually on Christmas Day. Across all devices, store hours peaks on Christmas Eve. Check your business profile to make sure that your hours are accurate and up to date. If you plan to change your hours for the holidays, maybe extended shopping days or closures, you can use the feature that's labeled special hours to help people know when you're open for business. If you have just five minutes to spare, start by reviewing and updating your hours and you can edit them in the info section within the Google My Business dashboard. Okay. Number two, here's another tip that you can knock out in five minutes or less, creating a short name for your business profile. A short name makes it easier to share your profile with customers and people can also find it by typing and searching for at short name into Google search. First, choose your personalized short name at and then insert your customer, your custom name, the name of your business. The URL will be formatted like this g dot page slash and then your custom name. This makes it easier than ever to share the profile and easy for customers to leave reviews. You can actually link them directly to the reviews page. The URL for that is g dot page slash then your custom name slash review without an S. You can create and edit the short name in the info section. All right, tip number three, adding photos. And more specifically, I'll talk about using your smartphone for bonus efficiency. If you have just another five minutes to spare, photos will really help your business stand out online. Some people put this off because there are some steps involved. You have to actually take the photos, then you have to download them to your computer, you potentially need to edit them, and then you need to upload them to Google My Business. It's faster and easier if you use the Google My Business app. The app allows you to use the photos that are on your phone or take photos with the built-in smartphone camera. 
You can then crop the image, add a filter, write a description, and publish in just a few steps. Here are a few ideas for photos that you can add during the holiday season. You might add photos of your holiday products. You might add photos of your holiday decor or special store displays. You might have photos that are related to the weather or the season. And you might want to update your cover photos and your logos for more of a seasonal flair. Okay, tip number four. A business profile doesn't have to be evergreen. You see what I did there? You can publish posts to keep information fresh and up to date and to promote special holiday offers. If you've never tried a post before, here are a few high level details. A post can include text, photos, or video. A post will remain visible for seven days unless it's an event which stays up until the event is over. After that week, the post is automatically archived. You can get back to it in the archive, but you always wanna keep something up and running and fresh. You can actually create multiple posts and they're different categories, including what's new, event, offer, and product. You can add a call to action button like order online, sign up, and call now. Here are a few holiday post ideas that correspond to the different types of shoppers that we talked about at the beginning of the session. You could create an evergreen post that promotes a early holiday event, like a seasonal open house or a shopping promotion. You could appeal to the deal seekers by featuring Black Friday specials, or you could appeal to last minute shoppers by promoting your extended hours or other helpful options like free gift wrapping services or local delivery. And let's not overlook a really important group of shoppers, the post holiday bargain shoppers or the gift card crowd. Here's another idea. After today's session, I would like you all to grab a calendar and then really start mapping out, planning out your post strategy. What is it that you plan to promote? And when are you going to publish those posts? What photos are you going to use? The more you do now, the more advanced planning that you do, it's gonna help you stay on track during the holiday busy season. And it's gonna make each of these updates a five minute project. Finally, tip number five, and I also get to introduce a relatively new feature called welcome offers. On the consumer side, on mobile devices, people have the ability to follow a business profile on Google Maps. That helps customers stay up to date, pulling your updates, your offers and photos into the For You stream, which appears at the bottom of the Google Maps app. On the business owner side, people can check out the customers tab in the Google My Business app, and you can learn more about your customers. A welcome offer is an optional promotion that you can include for new followers. When a person clicks follow, they'll see your offer like free gift wrapping for every purchase over $10. Now, there are several, several starting points for creating an offer in the app. Look for one of the options above, like a link labeled create a welcome offer or set up your welcome offer or create offer. Next, you're going to enter the details about the offer, including a photo, a title and a description. And once everything looks good to go, you click publish and then you've launched your offer for new followers. Here's what it looks like on the consumer side. If a person was looking at a business profile on a mobile device, they would see the option to follow that business. Once they clicked it, the person would have to accept. And incidentally, they do have the option to follow your business privately. Now, the welcome offer is going to automatically appear and your follower has the option to dismiss the offer or to save it. And then if they've saved it, they can go back and retrieve it by going into that business profile. Okay, that wraps up five Google My Business tips that you can knock out in five minutes or less. Google Ads may take a little bit more time, a little more effort, but I'm going to show you a few options that you can choose from. So how can you use ads to attract customers this holiday shopping season? Help them, assist them. People are looking for ideas. In fact, 57% of people, according to a 2018 study. If your business shows up when a person is searching on Google, you have a great chance, a great opportunity to showcase your products and services. 
advertising allows you to present a specific controlled marketing message or offer. If you're at a viewing party today and you want to learn more about advertising on Google, I suggest chatting with your event host. And alternatively, you can rewatch the May 2019 live stream, which was titled Drive Business Results with Google Ads. You can get there by visiting g.co slash grow slash live streams. Today, I have enough time to introduce three advertising campaign types. Before we talk about those types, let's very quickly review how ads work on Google. It all starts with a question. Maybe that question is, I need a gift for, insert something. My next step is to type that into Google. The word or phrase that I type is called a search query. Next, Google is going to display the search results, which include relevant ads, which are make up all the options that I can choose from. If I see a likely fit, that could be an ad, that could be in the organic results, that could be in that business profile on the site, on the side of the page, I'm gonna take that next step. I'm gonna to click to visit that site or call a phone number if that's displayed to connect me with the information that I am looking for. Here's another fun stat. For searches on mobile devices, here's an increasingly popular search. People are searching for, they type in gifts for, and then they insert dad, mom, sister, cousin, and then who has everything or who wants nothing. So you might actually be able to incorporate that into your promotions or marketing messaging this holiday season. Google ads can appear on Google search results pages when people are searching for products or services that you promote. Ads can also display on websites, mobile sites, and apps that are part of Google's display network. These ads reach people earlier in the buying cycle, appearing alongside content that is related to your business. Now, if you've never advertised before, a smart campaign is one of the quickest ways to get started. Smart campaigns were designed for small businesses. There is a straightforward setup process that can get your business advertising online in minutes. As with other Google Ads campaign types, there's no contract. There's no minimum commitment, no startup fee or cancellation fee. You control your budget and when and where ads can appear. Here's a quick overview for setting up a smart campaign. You would start by creating or signing into your Google Ads account by visiting ads.google.com. Then you'll proceed to create the campaign. Smart campaigns focus on goals. You have three options to choose from. The first goal is to call your business and you'd select this if you wanna to talk to customers or to set up an appointment or if you're using a, a forwarding number to track the phone calls along those lines. The second goal option is a visit to a storefront and you'd select this option if you have a physical location or that location is typically your first interaction with customers at the store. And goal number three is to take an action on a website. You'd select this if most of your business happens online or if you want to track a specific action that is taken on your site. Next, decide where your ads can appear. It might be a radius around that business location or in specific cities or regions, countries. You're going to select a category for your product or your service, and then you're going to write an ad. The final step is to set a budget, and that's it. Your ad is ready to launch. The May 2019 live stream, Drive Business Results with Google Ads, has a lot more detail about this, about setting it up. If you'd like to learn more, you can re-watch that presentation by visiting g.co slash grow slash live streams. This live stream has been focused on timing, and during the holiday shopping season, business owners are often very, very busy. One advantage of smart campaigns is that a lot of the work managing that campaign is automated. For example, advertisers do not develop keyword lists for smart campaigns. The equivalent, which is called a search phrase, is automatically generated. Smart campaigns use Google's technology to continuously adjust your bids and to help maximize your return on investment. It can also test variations, versions of your ad, showing the variations that get better performance.
If you're an experienced advertiser, you may opt to use other types of campaigns. These include display campaigns, video campaigns, and shopping campaigns. Display campaigns can help you find <clears throat> new customers or engage existing customers. You can target ads by audiences, showing them to the people who are most likely to be interested in your products. There are many options, including remarketing lists, and these actually help show your ads to people who previously visited your website. You can use the display network to show appealing ad formats like image ads and responsive display ads. You might also try a video campaign. Again, there are many formats available and different bidding options. For example, with a TrueView ad, advertisers pay when a viewer watches 30 seconds of your video or the duration if the video is shorter, or if that watcher engages in an interaction with that video. You can access reports that show how people interact with the videos, including the number of views, the view rate, and more. Last but not least, let's talk about shopping campaigns just in time for the holiday shopping season. So have you ever done a search on Google and notice those images of the products that appear at the top above the search results? Those are shopping ads. You'll see this type of ad on Google search, on Google images, Google shopping, YouTube, and more. When people are searching for products that you sell, like other ads on Google search results, advertisers pay when people click the product to visit your website. Shopping ads show a photo of the product plus a title, a price, the store name, and more. These campaigns can promote both online and offline local inventory. In these examples that you see in the screenshot, you're gonna see how, you're gonna see how yoga mats might appear. The ads highlight information like the shipping, uh, product ratings, the star ratings that you see, and those can appear when there are three or more customer reviews. Shopping ads use product data, not keywords, to decide when and where to show the ads. The product data an advertiser provides it includes product information, so you'll actually submit the details that help trigger those ads. Google Ads uses this info to match the ads to relevant searches. Now, there are four basic steps to creating a shopping campaign. The first thing that you need to do is to create a free Merchant Center account. Incidentally, you do not need to be an advertiser on Google to use the Merchant Center. And there's a little bonus. It's going to help your product appear in Google Shopping results. The URL to get started is google.com slash solutions slash merchant hyphen center. The second thing that you need to do is add products into the Merchant Center account. To do that, you will need to create a data feed. It's a file that includes the product information that you want to show. Google uses the information that you provide in this data feed to surface your inventory in the shopping results. And then you'll use that same data feed to create a shopping campaign. The third thing that you will do is create or sign into a Google Ads account. And finally, you'll actually set up the ad campaign. You can access detailed instructions on how to do all of these steps by visiting Google Support Center at support.google.com. From here, do a search for create a shopping campaign and it will provide you the information that you need to get started. Okay, I covered a lot of ground today, but many of these tips, my goal for them for sprucing up your online marketing plan can be accomplished in five minutes or less. So here is your to do list today. Check out Google for small business to generate a plan for using Google's products to promote your products and services this holiday season. Second, if your business meets with customers in person, set up a Google My Business profile and try some of the tips from today's session. Last but not least, check out Google Ads and the different campaign options. On behalf of the entire Grow with Google team, thank you for tuning in to my portion of today's workshop. 
I'm incredibly proud to be a part of an initiative that helped aims to help everyone across America, small business owners, and startups, job seekers, developers, students, and teachers, access the best of Google's training and tools to grow their businesses, careers, and skills. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing, please visit google.com slash grow. I'm going to now pass the baton to my friend slash grow. I'm going to now pass the baton to my friend Dave Charest from Constant Contact. He's going to give you some pointers about sprucing up your email marketing campaigns and strategies just in time for the holidays. Thanks a lot, and I'll be back for the Q&A. Why does round pizza come in a square box? Constant Contact makes it so easy to send emails. You'll have time to let your mind wander. Try email and our new website builder free. If your shirt isn't tucked into your pants, are your pants tucked into your shirt? When you're getting big time results from your Constant Contact emails, it's okay to let your mind wander. Try email and our new website builder free. Hello, hello, and thank you, Stasia. Uh, as Stasia mentioned, my name is Dave Charest. I am the Director of Content Marketing at Constant Contact, and I've been at Constant Contact for about eight years now, and I've been working with small businesses for over 13 years. And our goal is always to provide and share practical, step-by-step -step marketing advice so you can do more business or more for your cause. Now, there are a couple of things I'd like you to keep in mind as we go through this information today. Ultimately, the goal is to figure out what are the best practices for your business. Now, every business is different and a lot depends on the specifics of the business and the audience that you're trying to reach. Secondly, much of the advice I'll provide here is foundational. They're simple tips that have a big impact. And we often find many businesses aren't implementing them fully. So as I go through them, really be honest with yourself about whether or not you're doing all you can. You'll be glad you did. Now, before I get into the email marketing advice, I'd like to give a shout out to the G Suite uh, from Google that has productivity tools, including business email. Now, the business email is Gmail, and many of you probably already use it, but it's designed for business with administrative controls and no ads. And you can build customer trust by giving everyone in your company a professional email address at your domain like Susan at your company and Joe at your company instead of at Gmail. Now, once you have a professional email address, you'll have a great way to make your business look legitimate. But in order to take full advantage of email marketing, you'll want to use an email marketing tool like the one provided by Constant Contact to create professional looking emails, get access to insights, and do even more with our online marketing platform, including building a website with including even a store in minutes. Now with that said, it's holiday time. Let's get to it. So this is a big time of year for many businesses. The National Retail Federation estimates that the holiday season brings in 20 to 30% of yearly sales for small and mid-sized retailers. Now many businesses rely on the holidays to get them through the year. I have a friend, Peter owns a cheese shop and he tells me that this is the time of year as he likes to call it, that he's putting the wood in the shed. His success during the holidays really allows him to plan what the rest of his year is going to look like. Now, from this point on through January is a huge time for businesses of all kinds. So let's make sure we're planning ahead to capture the most business. 165.8 million people shopped between Thanksgiving Day, Thanksgiving Day and Cyber Monday. This is a huge a point in time. And these are those key dates because we have these incredible shopping holidays coming up in November. On November 29th, which is the Friday after Thanksgiving, is Black Friday, as I'm sure you're all familiar with. Small Business Saturday is that Saturday, November 30th, which I hope is a key day that you're thinking about and planning for to stimulate shopping during that time at your stores if you have a physical location. And then Cyber Monday is on December 2nd. And Giving Tuesday for our nonprofit friends out there is on December 3rd. Again, another important giving day to, to think about. So here's what I'm going to talk about in relation to this important time of year. We're going to talk about growing your email list. This is something you're going to want to be doing all year long, but in particular, now is a great time to start thinking about this and doing this aggressively so you have more people to contact during the holiday season. Then we're going to talk about creating emails that shine, 
simple ways to think about writing and creating content for your emails, and then really give you an idea of how you can send for maximum results. So let's get into growing your email list. Now, essentially, when you're thinking about growing your list, you have three ways you're going to be doing this in person, in print and online. Let's take a closer look at each of these. So when we're talking about in-person interactions, we're really thinking about, you know, you can think about at the register at checkout or while you're helping someone or even if you're at an event. Now, Constant Contact customers can use our List Builder app instead of that paper sign-up sheet so contacts get added directly into your account and you won't have to worry about finding the time and adding to add them manually and worry about deciphering that scribble and chicken scratch handwriting that people tend to put on those forms. Now, another thing to think about is using our text to join uh, feature, which allows people to sign up on their own with a mobile device. People text a unique keyword to a number to add themselves, and those emails are added directly to your constant contact account. Now, that leads us to our next section here, which is about print, which the text to join keyword and number are great things to put on print materials to encourage people to sign up for your list. It's an easy way to do that. And you can think about hanging signage around your store, putting information on your business cards if you're meeting people out and about, and then also thinking about flyers, brochures, and direct mail pieces to actually get more signups by putting that information on those print materials as well. And of course, lastly, there's online. So that's where you're going to share details on your social media profiles, um, on your posts as well to drive people to take that next step and get connected with you on email. Then you're also going to want to think about maybe providing a link to your sign up form or your landing page uh, on, on your, your email signature and put that information there. And of course, on your website, you're going to want to think about using sign up forms. Um, Constant Contact provides you tools that will allow you to put that information right on a web page, or you can even use pop up forms, which present themselves as people are visiting your website or even as they attempt to leave. So this is all great ways or good things to think about as you're wondering how you're going to actually capture more leads for your business in time for the holidays. Now, there's also a couple of other things that I want you to think about. Those are all organic methods that we've talked about, but you can also think about using paid advertising to help you generate leads for the holidays as well. You can use Google ads and social ads to collect more leads for your business. And what's great is you can actually manage them all in one place in your Constant Contact account and have those new contacts automatically. So keep that in mind too as you're thinking about ways of growing your leads and growing your contact list. So here's a word to the wise. Don't buy email lists. I know you're probably inundated by information from companies looking to sell you lists. And this is never a good idea. And it can really end up hurting your business reputation more than it helps because email marketing is what we call an opt-in marketing channel where people say, yes, I want to hear from your business. And that's why it works so well. Now, if you end up sending to people who haven't taken that step to opt in and they get your emails, that can get your emails marked as spam. And that's not a good way to start that relationship with people and your business. So keep that in mind. So how are you actually going to think about getting people to subscribe? Well, we actually asked consumers why they subscribe to email lists. And they told us to receive promotions and discounts, to receive exclusive content, and to show continued support for a business or organization. So think about what you can do in those areas in order, in order to offer somebody in exchange for their email list. So how do you actually ask for those email addresses? Well, what you want to do is actually answer some questions. And, and, and as you answer those, that helps you write your script for what you're going to say to people. And ultimately what you're doing is trying to remove this perceived risk that people have uh, in, in order to subscribe. So what are those questions? Well, the first is what would entice a potential subscriber? We mentioned promotions and discounts, exclusive content and ways to show, uh, show support. How can you lead with something that offers something in that area to get people to uh, give you their email address? Now you might also wanna consider, are there any objections that people might have? You want to address those concerns of frequency and detail how easy it is to opt out if they don't want to receive those emails anymore. All of those things can help minimize that perceived risk that they might have for giving you their email address. You want to think about how easily that they can sign up. You want to make that easy for them. So use those tools that make it easy to capture their permission and make that transaction seamless. And then what should they expect next? 
explain what happens once they give you their email address and what types of content and the things that they can expect to receive from you in the future. All of those things make it a lot easier for you and a lot less stressful than the person giving you that information. So here's an example of how you might ask online. If you look at this pop-up form, you'll notice that the headline of this pop-up form is get 20% off your next purchase. It's not sign up for our newsletter, right? Nobody wakes up in the morning saying, hey, I can't wait to get more email today. That's not what people are interested in receiving. They're interested in receiving the value you're gonna give them and the vehicle to get that is email. So there's a big difference there. Now, if you look at the email, uh, you look at the body here, I'm sorry, you, you, you see it says enter your email address below to receive your coupon. In the future, we'll send you a few emails a month with promotions, special events, and VIP exclusives. You can unsubscribe at any time by clicking on the link at the bottom of every email. We'll never share your information, promise. Now, it's important to think about here what happens after someone signs up for your list. Now, this is something, uh, a big mistake we see businesses make all the time, and it's that they're not engaging with new contacts immediately after someone joins their email list. So think about this for a second. If somebody, maybe you have a monthly email that you send out, which is great if you do, you wanna be consistent in doing that. But maybe you sent your email out yesterday and somebody signs up for your email list today. It may be a whole month before they hear from you again. And really you lose that ability to take advantage of this highly engaged time with your business. Because if somebody is taking that and making that value exchange in terms of giving you their email address, it's because they've had a great experience with you somehow. So you really wanna take advantage of that time. And so what we recommend you do is set up a simple automated se uh, series that can remedy this problem. So if someone signs up today, a week uh, or a month from today, they're automatically going to receive some messages to start building those relationships that are really important for your business. So let's take a look at what you would put in those emails. So there's two emails that we're going to recommend for you. The first one is a welcome email. And what you want to do is immediately after someone joins your list, you want to send that email out. And of course, this series is something that you can set up right within Constant Contact. So you send that immediately, and what you're going to do is deliver on whatever it was that you promised them in exchange for an email address. In this example, we're giving someone 15% off their next purchase. Then you're gonna welcome them to your list, and then you wanna set those expectations or reiterate those expectations of what they can expect from you in the future. Now, the second email is what we call an invitation to connect. Now, you send that a few days later and you invite them to connect with you on maybe there are particular social channels that you're using or there are other ways that they can contact you. You want to give them that information and let them know how to do that. And if you can encourage them to follow you on those social channels, now you have a way to stay top of mind within the inbox and then also on these social channels. And what's great is if people engage with you on those social channels, those those actions or engagements are typically shared and seen by the people that are connected to them, which are probably have similar characteristics to those people already connected with you. So those make good prospects for your business as well. So it's another way to expose your business to new people. Now, this is just two emails that we're recommending here in this, uh, in this series, but you can even go as far as welcoming someone by at adding a third if there's particular information about your business that someone needs to know. So you can think about what that might possibly be as well. Now, you've got a great way to collect email addresses and uh, engage with those people right away. Let's talk about thinking about what you need to do to create emails that shine this holiday season. Now, a big thing to understand is that everyone is different on your list. And so for that reason, you're really gonna wanna do your best to group like contacts together. Okay, so not everyone or not every message is going to be relevant to every subscriber or contact that you have. So really think about the interest that people will have with your products, services, programs, or even content. Now, at a high level, it might mean grouping people on, in your list based on different demographic characteristics, uh, interests, location, or behaviors. So let's take a look at some common, what we call segmentation strategies, really you can start to think about. So the first we mentioned here is demographics, okay? So you can think about things like age, gender, income, occupation, industry, marital stat status, and education. So thinking about things like that, let's say you know uh, someone's marital status is single, and maybe you then 
That leads you to focus your holiday messages on gift giving to friends or family, or maybe even self-gifting, which we heard about a little bit earlier, instead of messages focused on gifts for a significant other. That's one way you could think about using demographic information. Um, next is psychographics. So you can think about interests, social status, personality types, attitudes and beliefs, opinions and values. And I've got a confession to make, I love bourbon. <laughs> and I get emails from the bourbon review that includes details on different bourbons that I can try, but also bourbon related swag that makes sense based on my interests. So there are some ways you can think about using psychographics in the messages that you're sending out. Also, we have geographic information. So you can think about zip code, city, state, county, country, and even just the community that you're serving. So we know a fitness center that found out that many of their members actually didn't live in the town that the center was in. Instead, these people were commuters that went to the center before and after work. So this knowledge allowed them to really tar target their advertising efforts to get new clients in surrounding areas rather than in the immediate area. So this is all how you can start to use this information that you have to send more relevant information to people um, and craft your messages in a better way. And lastly, we have behaviors and actions. So this is where you can really segment uh, your contacts based on things that your contacts and customers are doing and using that to create specific messages. So you can think about email actions like opens and clicks. So maybe you think about VIP offers for the people that open and click a lot. Or you can create special offers designed to re-engage people that may be unengaged who aren't opening and clicking. So I want to just focus here on that clicking for a moment. So Constant Contact actually allows you to use what we call click segmentation to add people to lists. And then you can use automation to follow up with related messages that are timely and relevant because those messages come from an action that the contact has taken. So let's say you sent out uh, information about a particular product and somebody clicked on wanting to find out more about that. In the back end, you can add them to this list about interested in this particular product, and then you can follow it with messages about more on that product to them. So they're getting that information in a timely and relevant way because it's actually happening when they're taking that action. The other thing to think about is just purchases. And so if you're using some type of e-commerce platform, maybe Shopify or WooCommerce or something like that, you really can, Constant Contact has integrations with these that actually creates lists for you based on people's buying pat patterns. And so you can think about you know, people that have purchased in the last 30 days or something like that, or maybe people that haven't purchased yet, uh, people that are just leads for you. So you can start to think about how you craft messages specifically for those people. So start thinking about, based on these things that we've talked about here, think about what your groups are and how you want to engage with people or those particular segments this holiday season. So you can be thinking about maybe a coupon or a discount, Great thing during the holidays is free shipping, if you can be timely with that and offer that, but gift cards, um, a special gift with a purchase, or maybe it's something really exclusive. Now, once you kind of come up with your idea for this, this is really a great way that you can then start moving to creating your emails. Now, here's a good rule of thumb for you with your emails. Keep it simple. A picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. That's really all you need to have a highly effective email because we know time is of the essence and you don't want to be spending a lot of time crafting this, this huge message within your email. So let's take a closer look first from a design perspective what this means. So we recommend what we call here the seven essential elements of email design. So let's go through each of these things. The first thing we have here is the header information. And the reason why this is a design element is because this is the first thing people see in the inbox. So they're gonna see who the email is from, they're gonna see your subject line, and they're gonna see number two, which is the pre-header text, okay? And that's something that works with that subject line to entice people to open uh, even more. So think about those things, and if you think about how you process your own email, when you're scanning your inbox, you're looking at who it's from, do I recognize who that is, and then that subject line helps you figure out whether or not you're going to open that email. Third, you want to think about your logo and colors. So 
you put your logo in there, you make sure you're using the colors uh, coordinated with your website. Um, if you don't have a logo, actually Constant Contact can help you create one of those in minutes as well. So be sure to check that out. But you wanna make sure that you have that information in there so people start to recognize your brand and look forward to hearing you communicate with them. Um, use an image if you can, because that helps captures people's attention. Your text, you'll have a headline. You wanna use that to have that bigger than your normal text. You wanna use your, your message box to drive people to uh, what we call a clear call to action and that's that thing you want people to do next and then you have footer information number six on the list um, and seven and sorry seven on the list that should be one two three four five six and then seven is the social channels but we missed number seven on that list so you're gonna have your information that shows people how they can connect with you, what your shopping hours are, and all of that information. That way, if people forward your email because you've sent them some great content that they might wanna share with somebody else, they can take, uh, they know how to contact you, what your hours are, where your location is, and all of that. And then lastly is your social information. Always include those so people know where they can connect with you on your social channels. Now, after design comes the content, and we find that results come from focused emails that are designed to get someone to take one specific action. So what are the content pieces that change from email to email? We call that the email content cluster, and it's essentially five things, and it looks like I do have all five of those things here. So um, we wanna look at the subject line. Right? We recommend using four to seven words in that subject line because typically, especially on a mobile device, you have a, a short uh, window that people actually see in terms of what you're putting there. So you get that most important information up front. And then you have the pre-header text and you, want, you maybe have a few more words there because that's that kind of preview of what's inside the email before someone opens it up. You got six to 11 words there. Now, I got a really great example of this subject line pre-header combo from Netflix actually the other day. And the subject line read, here's what you started watching. And the pre-header was, let's see what happens next. Pretty cool way, I think, to actually get my attention um, and really pertinent to me because it was something that I was doing. And so when I got into that email, the image showed uh, so text and uh, the image was, was the show that I was watching, the text was the name of the show, and the CTA was a play button for the episode that I was in the middle of watching. So pretty cool. So think about that third thing, that image is supporting that message. The text is also supporting the overall message that you're trying to get people, uh, basically moving them towards number five, which is that call to action, which you want to have that be benefit driven. So here's a formula that you can use to actually write really strong email content like that Netflix example that I mentioned. We call this the three step persuasive formula. And all you really need to do is answer three questions for your re reader. So the first question is, what are you offering? And that actually becomes the headline of your email and it should succinctly promote what it is that you're trying to offer to people. Number two is how will it help the reader? So that's when you can use the message body and text to explain the offer a little bit more and generate more interest and guide people towards taking that call to action. And in that call to action, you answer the question, what should they do next? Now, this button should make it easy for the reader to know the benefit of taking the action that you want them to take. If we look at this example in, in the, in this, on the screen here, this shows that last year's models are on sale, gives some information about those models and why they're doing it and indicating the great deals that they can get. And then you see that the call to action there is see all deals. So it's very clear what's going to happen once they click that button. If all goes well, they're going to end up on a site on Southside Cycling site that shows them the deals that they have available from this particular email. So now that you have an idea of the design of your emails that are going to work best, how to write the content of the emails, you really want to think about what are you going to send and how often you should send to maximize your results. So let's move on to send for maximum results. So the big clear thing here to do is have a plan. Now, it may vary what you're going to do or how you're going to send based on what your particular plan is. For example, this example on the screen here from Dawn, uh, she's the owner of La Provence in Rockport, Massachusetts, and she offers a 10-day preview sale before Thanksgiving to give her customers a chance to save before the major holiday rush. So she sends an email with a coupon her customers can use for 20% off during the entire run of the preview sale. So now in this situation, 
she's going to send an email every day for 10 days. Now, that may not work for you, but here's just a simple way to think about it. Think at the very least about sending a three email series. In that series, what you're going to do is announce your offer. You're going to send a reminder about your offer, and then you're going to send a last chance reminder about that. So now keep in mind, people aren't thinking about your business all the time like you are. Their everyday lives often get away in the, uh, in the way of them taking the actions you want them to take. And frankly, sometimes they're the actions that they want to take. Uh, an example of this would be uh, my friend at the cheese shop, again, was having an event that I really wanted to go to with my wife. And I got that email first thing in the morning when I was just about to take my kids to school. So I saw that information and was like, oh, great, that would be something I'd love to do. But I didn't take any action on it because I had to run out the door. Then I got that reminder email, but I happened to be at work and I was just about to get into a meeting. So again, I couldn't take that action that it was something that I wanted to do. I just couldn't do it. But then I finally got that last chance email and that spurred me to make a real note of it. And, and it let me know that this was the time that I needed to take that action. So you're actually helping people by sending messages like this because you're giving them multiple chances to take and act on that information. So let's take a look at what this email series could look like. Again, this is just a gauge. It might vary based on your particular business, but this is just some ways that you can think about it. Or maybe this is a place you start this year and you learn and make adjustments for the next time you do something like this because you can do this and follow this through throughout the year. But let's take a look at the calendar. So here's a sample marketing calendar with these particular emails. Now, we're going to use that three email series, um, and we're going to use Small Business Saturday as an example here. So we have a special offer for Small Business Saturday. So two weeks out from Small Business Saturday, we're going to announce that offer. A week out from Small Business Saturday, we're going to remind people about this offer that they can come in and get for Small Business Saturday. And then lastly, a couple of days before Small Business Saturday, we're going to let people know that this is their last chance to take up that offer. Now, again, this is a three email example, but remember, just do what you can. And so if you can't send three, that might be okay. I mentioned my friend Peter, and again, he sent two emails about a Cheese of the Month Club, and he made over $900. Heath Bowman, he's the owner of Southeastern Underdeck Systems, and he sent one email with a limited time offer for Cyber Monday and made 27 sales. And because of the nature of his business, that totaled over $67,000. So again, your results are going to vary, but just to do what you can. And keep this in mind. You want to keep the momentum going after the holidays. So think about and keep in front of your mind is how you're going to communicate after those holidays. What is your plan for consistency? All marketing works best when you're consistent. So how are you going to make sure your messages stay relevant and timely? And segmentation and automation allow you to fulfill on your contacts expectations. So think in advance to make at least a simple plan for next year. So let's review this information that we went through today. Uh, number one is make sure that you're growing your email list, in person, in print, and online. You want to focus on offering something of value to people in exchange for that email list. And you want to use an automated welcome series to engage with them right away so you can start building those relationships and even stimulate sales right off the bat. Two, create those emails that drive action. Make sure you're grouping like contacts together so you can send more relevant content to them. Keep it simple with a picture paragraph and a call to action and use that persuasive formula to help you write that content. Answer just three questions. What are you offering? How will it help the reader? And what should they do next? And then lastly, remember to send for maximum results. You make a simple plan, get an idea of when you need to send from month to month and what events you have going on with your business or what offers you might wanna offer in, in relation to things that are happening in the world. Announce your offer, remind people about it, and give them a last chance. And then, once again, think beyond the holiday because you can replicate and chain or replicate this, this system and this plan for every event that has some type of timeliness associated with it. So, now that you have a simple step by step advice to succeed this holiday uh, season, if you need any help along the way, you've got this and you've also got us. So, you can get more holiday advice at constantcontact.com slash 
holiday where you can get some, some stuff specific to the holiday for you. Now with that, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to share our simple plan with you here today. And we're gonna take a quick break before we get to our live holiday Q&A. Now, don't forget that you can submit your question on Twitter using the hashtag holiday live stream 19. We'll see you in a few. Anyone can have a great idea. Not everyone has the guts or the grit to make it happen. But you do. And now you've got to figure out how to get the world as excited about your idea as you are. But you don't have time to make sense of it all. At Constant Contact, that's what we do. And it's why we're expanding big time into a full service online platform for all things marketing. Need an awesome looking website with e-commerce built in? Now we've got a tool for that. Trying to find new customers? We've got a tool for that too. We'll help you grow your audience, reach your social media goals, and a whole lot more. And we've still got the best email marketing tool out there. That'll never change. Plus, unlike other companies who leave you to figure it out on your own, we've got hundreds of marketing advisors who are just a call or chat away to help when you get stuck. And every day, our team is working hard to add more features and tools to help your ideas succeed. With Constant Contact, you've got a game plan because you've got what it takes. You've got this. You've got us. And welcome back. We are now taking questions from you, the viewers, on the topics covered in today's live stream. If you haven't submitted a question yet, do not worry. It's not too late. Head over to Twitter right now and submit your question using the hashtag HolidayLivestream19. And without much further ado, let's get started. All right. All right. Uh, we have our first question from Nancy Williamson from Nancy. South, Carol from South Carolina. South <laughs> Carolina. Uh, she asks, can we show this live stream again in a few weeks? We had several people mm -hmm. that couldn't make it today. Oh, well, yeah. Nancy, you can show this as much as you want. So we have our playlist that's on YouTube where we have all of our live streams there and you can create another party through the, uh, you know, you know the drill, Nancy, but we can actually make it a formal event. But yeah, anyone can go back and rewatch our live streams anytime that they want to. And that uh, URL for our live stream playlist is g.co slash grow slash live streams. Um, and then the next question we have is from Dimitri on Twitter. And this is for both of you. Uh, are most of your services available only in the US or are they available in other countries as well? Um, you go first. Uh, yeah, I, they're available in other countries as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Google's products and services, depending on the product that you're looking at, there is, um, you can look at the help center for different availability. But for example, the products that I talked about today, which are Google My Business and Google Ads are available in almost every country. Oh, wow, yeah. okay. So no problem, Dimitri, you can find it uh, hopefully in your country. And then uh, we have a question here for Dave, but okay. I think, uh, you know, Stasia, feel free to chime in as well. I probably will. Uh, you know, Stasia, she, she probably has an opinion on it. But uh, Paula from Hartford okay. says, uh, I work for a nonprofit. Obviously, our goals for the holiday season aren't necessarily the same as your typical retail or services right. business. What do you suggest I do to capitalize on the holidays and bring in the donations? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, a couple of things. We did mention Giving Tuesday is a right. really important day, a day. Um, because that's a big day that you know helps stimulate yeah, getting donations. So I would think about um, running a campaign in relation to that. Um, and going beyond just email and using your social channels as well to let people know about that is happening. It's a good opportunity. And then, of course, you have your end of the year donations as well. And, you know, think about, it, you know, your, your, your emails may be a little different in the sense of we were talking about offers in our examples today, but maybe it's instead of, you know, what is your offer? It's, you know, what is your cause? What are you doing? Um, how, why is that beneficial? And how can someone get involved? Are really those three questions that you start to answer there. And so think about how you can use that three email series, maybe to tell more of a story, let people know what's happening and the, what all the great work that you're able to do for whatever your cause is um, based on uh, donations from people um, that can help support that cause. So start thinking about those things, but 
you're really doing kind of the same thing in terms of letting people know something is coming, um, reminding them about it, and giving them that last, last chance to take action. Okay, that makes sense. And Fish. I think that it really fits in well with that, the trend that we're seeing where gifts for people who want nothing or people gifts for people who have everything. Um, I'm also, a lot of my friends and colleagues are in that same situation. So one thing that I you know, that I personally I'm in do. That situation, so right, right. No, I for holidays, yeah. I very often give them something that that's representative mm -hmm. for a particular nonprofit or for a charity. So, uh, I, I think that you could also market it in that way. You know, gifts for James. So maybe I uh, give him something on his behalf to your organization. So I think it's a great time for you to market your business, uh, your business, your Turn organization, your, your nonprofit. nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and speaking, I know you mentioned social media. Yeah. Um, Barbara from Raleigh, North Carolina asks, is there a way that email can help me to get more followers on social media during the holidays? Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that we often see is that email is just a fantastic way to drive action, no matter what that is. If it's an event, if you're having a special offer or you're just trying to get the word out about something, but that also moves to saying, hey, follow us on these social channels. These are the types of things that we're doing over here. Maybe you're doing a special social campaign that you want people to, to take notice of. And so email really helps drive that action and, and letting people know, um, because sometimes it's, it's easy to miss those things on social sometimes, right? And I mean, even think about this, the social channels, what do they send you to get you back to their channels? They send you an email, right? So it's actually a really great way to let people know about those things. And it's one of the reasons why we recommend in that welcome series that I was talking about, that second email is again an invitation for them to come follow you on your social channel so that they can get, get connected with you there as well. Some of that kind of cross-channel exactly, marketing. Right? You wanna, that, yeah. It's all about remaining top of mind and if you're again if you're in that inbox or you're in the social feeds too it's, it's just a good way to keep people engaged with you and keep them thinking about you. Yeah. And that's why I really like yeah. the, the new short name short link option that you yes. have in Google My Business because now it makes it easier to share with that shorter descriptive URL on your social channels or well. drive traffic to reviews as well. Correct. Right? So I think that's really important. Um, okay. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Thank you guys for submitting those. Um, let's see. Jennifer from Tallahassee asks both of you, uh, my team is strapped for time during this busy season because I'm a team of one. Sure. Yes. Uh, how can I possibly accomplish all of these things, especially if I haven't even set up my accounts yet. So I guess maybe we can think of a top tip or top takeaway that she can do right now mm -hmm. that can get her team of one prepared for the holidays. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to take a word that the part of the reason the way I structured the, the content the way I did is that you're absolutely right. This is the busiest time of year for, for you and for lots of other folks creating if we started if we looked at those two products the google my business profile you can get that set up and the verification process going really within a matter i mean the initial setup might be 10 minutes tops to get that going and then if you are methodical about it if you make that plan because right now you're only going to get busier between now and the end of the year but if you allocate yourself, okay, I'm going to spend one hour right now, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do, and then just schedule it in, you'll be a lot more successful doing that. That's with Google My Business, you can really, particularly with the app, knock out a lot of these updates very, very quickly. Um, for the ads piece, that's why I talked about smart campaigns first, precisely for that reason, because of the Google's uh, system, the software is actually going to take a lot of the more time consuming pieces and automate it for you. Uh, so they don't need to be ad experts. To use you don't need to be ad experts. Yeah. You don't need to be in there every day. You know, the thing is, when the more you give, the more you're going to get. So I can't say you have to spend X amount of time. The more time you can put into your online marketing, obviously, the more you're going to get out of it. But knowing up, okay, this is realistically what I can do for the next two months. And here's how I'm going to schedule that out. You'll be a lot more successful. And for these updates that you would make, you, you don't need to spend hours every day doing. It might be a matter of five minutes, 10 minutes a day, 
or a couple times a week between now and the end of the year. Yeah. So. And just from the email marketing perspective, you know, we have lots of templates that you can choose from. So a lot of that design work is already done for you and it's just really adding your content. We have images that you can pick from and choose right within your constant contact account. Do holiday templates. A holiday templates, holiday of course. Templates. Go check out that landing page. Yes. Really great stuff there. And so, you know, all of these emails and things that you're creating can be scheduled uh, ahead of time. So you're just kind of doing that at your schedule. Um, it's easy to use, and if you ever get stuck, you can actually pick up the phone and talk to one of our support people. will help walk you through. Even if you just need some marketing advice, people can help you there as well because we have marketing advisors ready to take your questions and help you out with that, and that can help you get over that um, time-consuming hump because you're able to actually get the answers to your questions and figure stuff out really easily. So. That we're here to help. <laughs> yes, we're all here to help. Uh, and speaking of uh, kind of the updates in the schedule that you were, uh, you were talking about, Taylor from California asks, is there a recommended frequency for Google My Business updates and posts? And same goes for uh, frequency of emails. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, more is more. You don't have, you can, you can, <laughs> right. you can put more than one up. At the very least, I would say they expire after seven days. So I would never let a period of time go where I didn't have anything running. So I would say at a minimum frequency between now and it's that critical time of year, I would at least once a week have a new post. Um, the exception of that is events, because if you have an event, it won't expire until after that yeah. event is over. Um, but if you know with using the app just taking a photo with your phone it makes it really fast to do i would make that schedule i don't want to keep saying the same thing over again but i would really sit down now make a plan for yourself and then just try to stick to it as best as you can between now and the end of the holiday shopping season and that way if you have oh well, look i have a little extra time maybe you create another one but at least at the very minimum you'll have the you know the following weeks planned out in advance I think yeah. you want to add? Yeah, from, so I guess from the email perspective, um, you know, we, we mentioned kind of the announcement, the reminder and the last chance. So thinking about setting up something like that. But I think the other thing to mention is, you know, people now kind of want information when they want it. And so that's why I mentioned a little bit in there, that idea of click segmentation and using automation. So you could send out information about a particular email or a particular product or service or something like that, I should have said. Um, and then when somebody clicks on or says, yes, I'd like to get more information about that, you can have those things set up already so that it adds them to that list and automatically delivers e emails with that follow-up information. So they're Based getting on the action. Exactly, right? So it's getting for. them very yeah. um, timely and relevant information to them right away. And you don't need to, um, work on being reactive because you're being right. proactive. Exactly, right. exactly. And so, so. you're and, and because you're putting them in charge of that, it works better for you yeah. because you're not just saying like, I'm deciding to send you this information that you didn't ask for. <laughs> right. You know? So so <laughs> yeah. here, right? Yeah. So yeah, right. They're actually so looking this, for this. Right. They're like, oh yeah, I want to learn yeah. more about that. Yeah. And then they get it. And that creates a great experience yeah. for somebody. And so those are the types of things that well, I would think like about. That unboxing video. So I bought yeah, that right. product yes. for you and then you Trigger, oh, by the way, here's how to put it together. Here's how to put this together, right? right. Send them more information, how to get the best use of that product yeah. or something like that. That's always stuff that works really well. So Okay, a lot of great tips. Um, and we have a lot more questions coming in. Really? So yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah. we can get to them all. Uh, Lisa <laughs> Shinkat asks, Dave, Constant Contact uh, mentioned logo development. Is that a free service or is that a paid service? Yeah, so that's actually a free service. So uh, if you go to our website, you should be able to find that under, there's a website tab there. There's some information about a logo maker there. And um, yeah, you put in your, you type, it's actually a lot of fun. And I recommend sounds, if you haven't tried it, like, even at the office, we spent like, <laughs> uh, not that much five time. Minutes. Five minutes. Five but, minutes. Yeah. But <laughs> product testing. Time, product just testing. put in the name of your business. You can put a, a tagline in there if you want. And then it just automatically generates just hundreds of options. We do oh, like three at a time for you. Yeah, that you can go okay. in and then start to customize. And then you can download those. Um, I, it's Illustrator, for, not Illustrator, but it's in vector format. So you can take those and get those printed on things. So it's really a great and fun tool. So if you, for free. And for free. Wow. And if you don't have a logo, definitely recommend to check it out because it's it's awesome <laughs> everyone you've heard that go home after <laughs> this and try out your hand at making a few logos um but we have wow uh america's svdc at wtamu asks stasia can you go into more detail regarding the differences in g suite and regular gmail sure uh 
so G Suite is built off of the platform that most of you are familiar, Gmail being the, your, the email program that most consumers, many consumers using, I'm gonna go with most. Um, G Suite is the professional version of that. So um, some of the key differences are, well, it's a paid product. Um, it starts at $6 a month for it. But with that, you get a service level agreement, 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. You get 24 seven phone and email support. Yeah, so you get a lot of the protections and the sure. support that you would get with a service. There's also more storage. Um, you know, basically, you, you get more of everything. You can store more files. Um, there so are, a lot of professional services. Right. Kind of for me, the most you know the most compelling reason though for a business to use the G Suite product versus the consumer version is the ability to associate your own domain name with the email address. So that's that at business. Name, Correct. Not so at gmail instead of my business at gmail.com, mm -hmm. it's Stasia at Stasia's Bakery. We haven't heard about that in a long time. StasiaBakery.com. So it, it just makes it that much more professional. So for no other reason, that is why I, you know, for small businesses, for all businesses, I would recommend switching to a professional product like G Suite. Yeah. For all businesses, I would recommend switching to a professional product like G Suite. Yeah. It's an important thing. I, I mean, just to, to add in there is that having that professional kind of email address is a big thing because you get these emails from people where it's, it's like my name at gmail or my name at whatever and you're AOL. like you're like yeah. and we all get so it's much email right you know, I know. how long has this business been around like you know it's a really yeah. helps legitimize your business and 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 show that yeah you're a real business like right. this is a real I'm thing that so, a spam right exactly so it's yeah. i think it's really important to think about um it's something really simple to, to set up and, and from the outside set. no one will know no one knows that right. you're using g suite to you to, to power your email. Um, so it's it's very much, you know, you, you control it and the how you're presenting your business. So I think it's a it's a really easy way for you to kind of up the, the professionalism of your communications. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Um, and we have a question for both. This is from at Priyanka. Well, she just got her own name, so <laughs> no last name. Uh, my question is for both. Do you think this plan can help for businesses that provide services and branding? If yes, in what way? I think she's talking about, you know, kind of both email and, and yeah. ads and GMB, but yeah. Um, um, rocks, paper, scissors? Go ahead, you can go. Okay. Uh, uh, right. uh, right. <laughs> uh, so without more specifics, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you're an online only business um, so she has offers branding. So what it's like? uh, that provides she services does. and branding. Services and branding. All right. Let's make the assumption. So versus retail. Let's make sure. Let's make the assumption that you are uh, an online business. That may be true. Uh, of the two products that I talked about today, Google My Business wouldn't be necessarily be a good fit because that is for businesses that have a physical storefront that meet with customers or people who work in a specific service area. Google Ads, however, would be applicable no matter what your business model is, whether it's online or offline or both. Um, and I would need to I need to understand more about your business, about providing any more specific strategies. But the nice thing about Google Ads is there are so many options that you can present, whether that's a visual or a video presentation of that, that really illustrates the value that you bring to a potential customer client. Or if it's something that you could describe in text, then you can use those text ads as well. Um, but I would encourage you to chat with your, if you're at a, a holiday viewing party today, chat with your event host and they may be able to steer you in a direction. Or Google for Small Business, um, that plan that we suggested at the very beginning, you could enter your website URL in there and see what products are recommended that, that Google can provide. All right. Your yeah. I would just say that yes, um, yes. I, you know, I, yes, yeah. <laughs> and good night. No, so, <laughs> um, so think about you know this is a very busy time of year for small businesses in particular, and if you're offering services that are helping them kind of take some of those things off their plate, like this could be a great time to start letting them know, hey, it's about to get really busy. I know you've got a lot going on. We can take some of that off your plate. 
Um, you know, we have lots of partners at Constant Contact that, that offer those types of services that take over those accounts and help people do their Constant Contact, their email marketing, other online marketing efforts. And so, yes, I think it, the, this, these types of plans could work. It's just your, your messaging changes, right, because of the audience that you're trying to reach. So for sure, there are definitely ways you can use that. Okay, you heard it, Priyanka. These <laughs> products and services can help you. <laughs> yes. uh, this one is for Dave. We got a question sure. from Lionel35. Lionel35. Okay. In regards to follow up emails, what degree of automation does the platform have in order to make the follow up process more seamless for the small business? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, for, well, I guess for the, for the small business. So, so a couple of things that you can do in terms of automation. So we mentioned setting up, um, setting up a welcome series, and that's all based off of somebody joining a list. You can also think about setting up automations based on people opening a specific email, opening any email, or clicking on any link, or just you know a specific link. You can also do things like, let's say you wanted to send out your announcement about a particular offer that you have, and you can check a box that says resend this email to non-openers. So mm -hmm. people that didn't open it the first time, you know, we recommend maybe you give them two days to, to open that because that's when most of your opens are going to happen. And then two days later, you modify your subject line a little bit, you do all that on the first setup, and that will automatically send to everybody who didn't open. So there are things like that that will really help you kind of streamline that process. Okay, that, that makes things easy for you, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and it looks like we have time for one last question. Gonna be. Let's make it a good one. Uh, let's see. I want to find something that you can uh, both answer. Um, How many questions? We have so many questions, wow. and I'm, I'm so happy. Guys. Thank you guys for putting them in. Um, I guess the question I have is uh, Sylvia P asks. How do you determine customer demographics and can, can we maybe uh, modify this for holidays specifically mm -hmm. in terms of who, who they should be targeting and how they, they go about that process? So is it about deciding which demographics to mm -hmm. use or is it about using the tools to find the demographics? I think both. Okay, I mean, one valuable exercise to go through, do you guys do the sort of the persona exercise where you're like, okay, who, let's look at my, my customers and let's you know, kind of develop a, a series of personas over who they are, who, you know, where they live, uh, where they may work, do they work, what are their marital status? And so if you can come up with these profiles of these representative customers, that can help you sort of tweak your marketing strategy and, and take in the right direction. Now, within any of the tools that you're using, for example, with, with Google Ads, um, you, particularly like the display campaigns and things like that, you have the ability to actually target into particular audiences based on things like demographics as well. So you can use those products and services that way. Now for Google My Business, which is that business profile that I talked a little bit about that, you can't uh, target content specifically to a demographic, but you know, if you've gone through that exercise and created those personas, you might know that, hey, this is a really important time for me to be marketing my products and services to, you know, to this group of people. So I am going to create a marketing message in a post that really resonates with that particular group. Mm. Um, so it's, again, really taking a step back, really thinking about your customer and thinking about what offers are going to make the most sense for them. Yeah. And now I'll come to you. Yeah, I'll just add to that, that it's a lot of times it's something that you, you, gather over time. It's information that you're gathering based on actions people are taking and the offers that you're creating and putting out there. I think one of the easy ways to start doing that if you're creating ads or using paid activities, they let you pick things like demographics and things like that to target when you're sending those ads out. And I think if you're connecting that with the lists that you're creating, let's say, for example, if you're gathering leads, you can use that same information, pull that into the leads that you've gathered from targeting that specific audience that helps you give yeah. some indication on the types of things that will be good to offer that particular list of people. And so I think it's over time adding to the, the content information that you have and thinking specifically about um, what you can offer to them. And as you mentioned, it's a lot of times at first starting, it's, it's about guessing and just being really clear. All right, this is, 
who my customer is or who I think my customer is, and this is who I'm going to go after and who I'm going to create my offer for, and then add to that information yeah. that you have over time. And we haven't really talked, I mean, this was not session was on focused on sure. websites, but if you have a website, uh, there's, I would be remiss to not mention a tool called Google Analytics, which <laughs> can, <laughs> where, right? <laughs> so you, if you set that up for your website, it's free. You can then collect information, including demographics o over time, though. Right. You need to have right. the time yeah. and that traffic to learn about the people who are visiting your site and their behavior on that site. So you can get more information that way, which can inform your marketing messages and your whole strategy. Well, thank you for that Google Analytics. Oh, you're welcome. It's, it's one of my and favorites. And I know we are out of time, but I wanted to quickly ask Dave, I've yes. heard uh, Constant Contact has been putting together an online marketing guide. Yes, course, yes. I just wanted so yeah, so we've created a, a, a guide called The Download, Making Sense of Online Marketing. And um, it takes people through using their website, using email marketing, using social media, listings and review sites and paid advertising, and really just making sense of all of that for people that may be new, understanding how that works, gives you specific action steps that you can take in there. Um, you can find, I think we've given it to people that are at some of these viewing parties, but if you aren't one of those or you didn't get a physical copy, uh, you can actually get a digital copy at constantcontact.com slash the download, one word. Um, and you'll see there's a, a version that we have up there now. Uh, further down on the page, there's a version for nonprofits. And we're actually creating a version of this. We have a real estate coming up next, but we'll have professional services. So I think we're run path to do somewhere up to 20 different verticals oh, wow. on this. So it's really wow. specific to your industry, but check that out. Um, and we've had lots of great feedback on it. And it's, it's it's as concise as can be while offering a lot of information to help you really start to take some action and get better results on how everything kind of works together. So definitely check that out. Well, I can't wait to read it. Yeah, Sounds like some it. light holiday reading. <laughs> but that is all the time that we have. Uh, on behalf of Google, I want, I want to thank our two amazing, amazing presenters, <laughs> Stasia and Dave, and our partners over at Constant Contact for teaming up with us on our annual holiday live stream and making it the biggest and the best one yet. Yeah. Um, I hope everyone tuning in, you feel more prepared, and I hope you all have a, a successful holiday shopping season. And to all of our partners that are hosting viewing parties in your local communities, we couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you so, so much. I'm your host, James. Thank you for tuning in today, and we hope you have a safe and happy holiday season. Take care. Bye.